as highlighted before, what we're going to focus on this time is the uh, entity properties. And we're going to learn how to expose those to the designers so that you are adjusting all the variables strictly inside the C++ code and they're exposed inside of the editor itself. So I'm going to hand it off to Philip again and he's going to go over it himself. Yeah, let's do it. What we're going to do is simply implement the get property group function and also implement the identity property group interface. So if we simply scroll up just a tiny bit, we get to see what we need to do for the identity property group interface. So quickly, just implement that. And then at the bottom, just signify where we're doing this to separate the other code and implement the label, which should just be uh, my entity. So in this case, this is simply a designer side showing in the UI where the properties are and which component they belong to. So all we want to do is specify which component this is and nothing else. Then we want to override the special function, which is the serialization one. But this is the one that's important. This will be called whenever the UI wants to display properties. It will be called when you're writing to disk and we'll, it will be called when we're reading from disk. Maybe just to clarify for new users, uh, what, what does it mean to serialize something? Essentially, we could say that it's the act of either writing or reading. So this is called to, for example, write to an XML file mm -hmm. and then read the exact same data from the same XML file. Okay, that makes sense. What we could do then is simply add our mass, which we should actually have as a float and also a string indicating our geometry. And then we'll replace the instances we had before. And simply set the default value down here to 10 and replace the mass up here. What will happen is that when we've serialized this and initialize is called, or sorry, when we actually change these properties, we will immediately take these values and we update the entity pretty much. Okay. Now keep in mind that since initialize is only called when the entity is spawned, we have to move this to a new function. What we'll do is it will move it to a function called uh, reset and copy all this into reset and call reset from initialize. And then also we want to serialize our auction actual properties what we do is we take the geometry we set the label geometry geometry and archive the mass call it mass and also give it a label keep in mind that we, we are repeating the same string twice here when we are serializing so the first one is what is actually stored in data this cannot contain spaces or special characters. Mm -hmm. And the second one is what is displayed to the user. So if you want something prettier that the user can see with spaces, special characters, whatever you like, you can do that to the right here. But anything in the middle has to be a normal string, no special characters, no spaces, and that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and we said it should also be called at the end here. So if we check archive, and then if it is uh, input, then we should call reset, meaning that if we have input something new, we call the reset function. And simply compile this quickly to test. Will this compile? No. And this, the reason this doesn't compile is actually because sometimes we need special ways of serializing properties. For example, a string needs to include a specific header in order to be serialized. Uh, we keep most of, most of these in the same actual header, which is cry serialization, cry serialization slash decorators and resources.h. That are compiling again. And we have to notice that we didn't return the string here, which is an error. So correct that, compile again. And there we go. A couple mistakes later and we're back on track. Go to bin, copy this compiled binary and start the editor. As you can see, there isn't that much code to actually serialize these properties. What's good is that we keep the properties within the class itself. If 
So load a level again. Sorry. Load. Oh, we were under sample to it. Mm -hmm. Drag in my entity. This. Mm, and properties. then switch to properties. And we actually see that they don't show up right here. Let's see what's wrong. Yeah. We actually had one more mistake here in that if we go back and see what pure virtual functions you can implement for iEntity component, there is also the get property group function. By default, this simply returns a null pointer, which means that the component has no properties. What we want to do is, since we implement both iEntity component and iEntity property group on the same class, we simply return this. Override, compile again. Repeat the same process of copying the binaries. And start the editor once again. Mm. See if we get lucky this time. Yeah, let's hold our thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we load the level once again. Drag in my entity, and there we go. There we have our actual mesh. What we could do is try changing this to sphere. Notice it immediately changed to sphere. Drag it up, press play, and it falls down. Just like that. Excellent. There's nothing more to it. One more thing we could do if we wanted is actually change this to have a geometry selector. As you see now, we have to actually type in the name and know exactly what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. What's very useful is to have this button to the right to be able to open the Explorer window and immediately find the asset we want. So let's do that quickly. The way to do that is to go into resources to see what various selectors we have. And what do we have? We have geometry right here somewhere. Can you spot that? Mm, Geom cache picture. picture. Mm, it's model fine, fine name actually. Geom cache would mean that it's only for the geom cache functionality and not geometry. Okay. So we want to change the archiving here to the namespace serialization. And the model file, sorry, model file name and m underscore geometry. Compile that and move over the binary once again. Launch the editor. I guess I just looked at the name picker actually. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, picker, <laughs> picker, but it makes sense. Yep. So we drag our asset in, oops, drag it in like just like that, and now we have our selector. And if we move this to the correct screen, you can see that we see all the various geometry instances here. We can select them, and we automatically update right away. So if we go for the pyramid and move this up, we can simply press play, and it updates. And that's it. Custom properties, custom entity, geometry, all of the above, and done very fast. Pretty cool. We've seen quite a bit in uh, the entities and the components. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we'll see where we go from here, but nice stuff. Yeah.